Okay, are we live? <laughs> We're live? Um, Yeah, we're there. Okay. All right. So, hello. I am Deb Evans. I'm a financial coach and um, enrolled agent, a federally licensed tax professional. And I'm here with my friend, Kyla. And Kyla is an amazing attorney who specializes in business issues and legal and uh, rent, uh, um, real estate okay. issues, mm -hmm. which are cross posts with what I do very, very well. So, we both um, deal with businesses. And we have businesses that are just starting, and we have businesses that have been in business. Yep. And uh, we would like to um, maybe to redirect <laughs> some issues that we see, because most of the clients we see come in after um, they've developed an issue. So we want to talk about how you start your business um, to avoid issues, and if you're already in business, um, these are it's never too late, right? It's never too it's late. Never Everything's too late. fixable, yes. except for death. That is, that is my favorite quote from Kyle, and I've been stealing it, is everything's fixable. Everything yep. can be fixed. Yep. So if you're already in business, do not despair if you've made any of these mistakes because Kyle can fix it for you. And if you're in trouble with the IRS, I can fix Definitely it for you. Definitely fix it. So we're good. So let's start out with when you first start your business. And what I see is there's two ways you start a business. Mm -hmm. One is you're super organized, and you write a business plan, and you talk to a lawyer, and you talk to a, an accountant, and you're... You're, you're good to go, mm -hmm. but that's not what I see mostly. I was going to say, that's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> what I see mostly is, um, hey. A great um, idea in the my, middle of the night. My neighbor asked me if they could pay me to take pictures, so mm -hmm. I'm a photographer now. Okay. Or um, I'm making stuff that's really cute, and um, my, my friend bought one, so I'm in business. Right. Right. <laughs> and now what do I do? So is that what you see so, mostly? Yeah, I see a lot of that. So thank you, Deb, for doing this. Um, exactly. I personally work with Deb uh, when it comes to my business matters. It's something that a business owner needs to embrace at some point that you have to have a village of support behind you in the sense that... Absolutely. I want to talk about that. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, I, I talk to a lot of potential clients about starting a business and I feel like sometimes when we get off the phone, they're almost... Um, scared to start a business it's and I don't overwhelming. yeah I definitely don't want anybody to be scared but I've seen so many things happen um that that we try to avoid those from happening in the future so before you start a business um best thing to think about is are you going to be by yourself are you going to be in business with a spouse are you going to have business partners what does that process look like? So you need to figure out who the players in your business are going to be. And that's going to be a big determination as to what kind of entity you need to set up. Definitely. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, a limited liability company under the state of Texas is probably going to be the best fit for your entity due to the, the minimal corporate formalities that the LLC has versus corporations. Um, but so, because as soon as you form an entity, you're responsible. You have yeah. obligations from the state, and you need to be aware of that. Yes, and so that's a big takeaway that we want for... We're doing a three-part series because we have so much to say, and we've got four people listening, so that's awesome. Um, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh, this is my first... I don't know if I told you this is my first Facebook Live video. Yay! I know. I'm so not tech-savvy, so thank you guys for being patient with us. This but, is my first planned... I usually just like, I'm doing live, and I go for my phone. So, yeah, Thanks. You've, been, you've been warned this time, so that's nice. Um, okay, so when I have a client come in who wants to start a business, we sit down and we talk about who's going to be involved in the business, and then we determine what kind of entity is going to be appropriate. Can we, can we back up a minute? Yeah. Because um, I think before you get to that point, you need to be really clear on what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. Um, um, and it doesn't have to be 100%. It doesn't have to be 100% because we evolve. Right, right, right. But you know, you need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Y'all heard that. What is my why? Right. Yeah. Um, but the absolutely. why, if you just seriously want a side gig and make a little money to pay for, you yeah, know, don't dance set classes, up an entity. It's too much just, work to, to but, maintain. But you're still in business. You're in business, and so a lot of the stuff that I'm dealing with, you're in business. You are you ta you have taxable income coming in. You need to know your deductions and things like that. But you don't need to. You now later you could. Yeah. Side, side gigs, I had one client come in and say, my side gig exploded. What do I do now? That, that's a wonderful problem to have. Sure. Um, but let's say you are, I want a business. I want, I, I want, this is going to be supporting my family one day. This is my goal. 
Take it from there. They come to you. Right. So it, it's going to depend on, again, if it's going to support your family and it's going to bring in a salary and income for your family, we need to talk about how you're going to be designated uh, by way of the entity. So are you going to be a single member LLC? And then talk about how you're taxed as a single member LLC. Okay. And then I'll just talk about the other one. And then if you're not, and let's say you go in with your spouse, you're designated as a partnership under... Okay. Yeah. In Texas, do you, there's a different way you can Well, in it. Texas, you can be a disregarded entity when you have a spouse. Mm -hmm. but um, Because we're a community property state, which most people don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, God, we're going like, to load them up with a bunch of legal info. But basically, you need to know how you're going to be taxed as an entity. So when we start the process, I like to tell my clients, this is the way that you're going to be taxed, and this is your obligation annually. So, Deb, what does it look like when you're a single member LLC? That means you're the only member of the company. How are you taxed? You are taxed as a sole proprietor. The IRS does not recognize LLCs. When you get an LLC, it's through the state. And right. so people are like, well, then why do I need an LLC? My response is always insulation from personal liability. So long as you comply with the requirements of keeping your corporate accounts separate from your personal accounts. Which is where the problem tends to. Sure. So I recommend really good liability insurance too. Absolutely. You need, you need Laura Vasquez is who I call oh. on the reg for uh, commercial insurance questions. Good to know. Good to know. And I also refer her regularly to clients. So, what, but without getting into too much of the weeds here with the legal discussion on this, but you have to maintain corporate records separate from your personal records. You can't dip the two and intermingle the two. Not with an LLC. You will, you will lose your protections. It's piercing the corporate piercing the veil. veil. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a term of art. And you don't want to do you that. You don't want to pierce the corporate veil. Because as a, as, when you start your business, you're a sole proprietor. Everybody's a sole proprietor. So I have people say, oh, uh, uh, somebody that we both know, two years in business, posted, I'm an LLC, I'm official. No, you've been official for two years. You've been in business. Okay, so you're in business. So you are. <laughs> the state's not caring what you're doing, except for some things we'll talk right, about later. Right. But the IRS cares. So, you know, income is income and it's taxable. So sure. I can help you with that. And um, now you've made them aware that you, you know. Yeah, said, I have yeah. so many people, oh my gosh, that come to me and say, you know, for the previous year, what do you mean I owe taxes? What do you mean I have taxable? You have income. Income taxable. That's, it's taxable. Okay. So as an LLC single member, you are taxed like a sole proprietor. You report your income on a Schedule C on your 1040 tax return. Because as a sole proprietor, you and your business are one. You're the same. Mm -hmm. So the LLC is what gives you that little bit of separation there. But according to the IRS, you're still one. Yes. Okay? So it's super easy, right? You're just you're, you're 1040. But if you're a multi-member LLC, you go to Kyla and you say, my best friend and I are starting a business. Um, we want to be you know, multi-member LLC. The IRS sees you as a partnership. Yes. And why does that matter? Because partnerships, for one, have different tax return to file. They have a 1065 to file, and then the income flows through on K-1s to their 1040. The deadline's also a month earlier, which is where people lose it. Um, so the deadline for partnerships is March 15th. Now, this year's stupid because all the deadlines are screwed up. Yeah. Because of, you know, but in general, usually, count, but. usually um, the deadline for partnerships is March 15th. Yeah. Dealing with person is, is April 15th. So that's a big difference. So I have people come to me, they have we have a partnership, uh, or they have an, a multi member LLC. The letter from the IRS says you have filed a they sent yeah. you a letter and it says you file a partnership tax return. Um, but nobody looks at the letter. Because they're still so amped up about starting their business, they're so excited. Mm -hmm. But then what happens? <laughs> One of the partners loses interest. So I want to just, not to interrupt, I want to talk a little bit about partnerships because I think this is something that isn't talked about enough. And starting as a partnership? Starting as a okay. partnership. So I, I meant to get this um, statistic before we started, but the divorce rate of partnerships, 82%. Thank you. So there is an 82% chance that the person that you go into business with will not be the person that you continue doing business with. And if you're legally in business with them, that's a problem. And so I need to say that again because I think people do not understand. 82% likelihood you will not work out in this partnership. So what I like for my clients to do is plan the end before the beginning. 
And generally when you do that, the partnership dissolves before it starts. When you start talking about the procedures and maintenance requirements and who's gonna take care of this, who's gonna take care of this, who handles profits, who handles losses, how are they gonna be split? How are the spouses gonna handle things? So one second. So when you say, hey Kyle, let's go into business together, that's when you have this conversation. Absolutely. And I I think that there's that the good feelings and the good vibes that go with two people that want to work together and then we, we can conquer the world, we can do all the things. Girl power. Girl power, which I'm all about. Love me some girl power. But it just doesn't translate that way statistically when it comes to running a business together. So what are we saying? We are not saying that you can't go into business with somebody because, I mean, some of the most successful businesses have multiple people involved. But I suggest each person set up their own entity and maintain responsibility for that entity. And then you can go into business with whoever you want under a services agreement, a master services agreement, a you know, whatever we wanna call the business that you're doing together. But the agreement itself will dictate how the profits and losses are gonna be split. And it will dictate what happens if one of you loses interest or you get it in a fight. Sure, so let's talk about that because we have a mutual client that's going through that. Okay. Um, partnership. Shocker, the 82% rises its ugly head again, it dissolved, but the problem is the partners quit talking, like legitimately quit speaking to one another. That is a problem. So the one partner who's still actively running the business is like, well, she's not involved anymore, so we just wanna take her off the business. It's just not, it's just not how, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, and also I have people who don't wanna face the fact that the partnership has dissolved, so they just ignore the business. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not like very good the marriage, um, but they ignored the business. And so then you have this issue where it's like the business is still, it's a perpetual existence. The business is in existence until you actively dissolve it. And the IRS is expecting a tax return every year. Absolutely. You can file a zero tax return, but you need to file that tax return or you're getting a letter. So just say, we don't want to do so If you're a sole proprietor and you say, I'm done, I'm not doing it anymore. Nothing happens, just Nothing don't happens. do it anymore. Right. But once you get that legal entity, you can't just say, I'm not doing it anymore. You have, to, you have to do stuff to make it not happen. So I think that, and, and I want this to be, if you get anything from this today, partnerships are not what people think that they are. The likelihood of success is very slim. Speaking to somebody like me or Deb or both of us before you start a business can be invaluable when it comes to the, the longitude and success of your business Definitely. on a long-term basis. So if you're serious about your business, I mean, I know everybody's working lean and you're trying to save money. This is not the place to save money. You're, no. you're, you're doing yourself before you start. No. That doesn't mean you need to pay someone long-term right off the bat. But getting some solid advice going forward, especially if you're working with somebody else. Yeah. Um, so as far as what's the other alternative? So they, they, they form an LLC. What are the other options? Of, of what? To form their entity. Of other corporate entities that they could form? Oh, wow. Yes. So, so they're like, we are, we're big guns. We want to we we go all the way. We want yeah. shareholders. We want investors. Do we, we want different classes. So, yes, so, like um, so in that case, you would probably be more interested in setting up a corporation. Um, a corporation is kind of the OG. It's been around the longest. Uh, it, there are some corporate formalities that are required to be complied with in the corporation realm. So you probably don't want to do that. So yeah, I mean, for some entities, a corporation is a good fit. For those that I see that want to take part in some significant profit sharing, or want to set up a pretty, I would, I would say a pretty high level um, investment structure and, and shareholder structure. Maybe a corporation is best for yeah, you. If you're bringing in outside money. Investors, in, international investors. If you have an international investor, you have to do a corporation. Um, you cannot have uh, non-citizens uh, in an LLC. Um, where you can in a corporation, uh, you have to have one citizen, but you can have... Um, 
foreign So there's just a lot that you investors. need to be aware of. And people are like, oh, I'm going to form a corporation. Well, don't do that unless you know what you're doing, what you're getting into. You don't have to do that. You don't, you know. And if you, can and it, grow into it that? doesn't, you can, you can grow into it. Um, I don't like swapping around entities. So I like for my clients when they pick what they're going to be to stay in that lane. Um, and so what I tell people is I may not be the attorney that you work with and I'm totally okay with that. But you want an attorney who offers a free consultation that's important don't pay for a consultation because you need to understand what am i signing up with an attorney for what do i what am i going to expect to get from them and what does the process look like and so you may in that initial consultation learn i'm not ready for an entity it's not time yet. And I have those discussions all the time right. where let's say it's a, and you can be a still prop. You, can, I, you don't good, have to stop your business. Good example. Mm -hmm. And I'll go over this one with you. Um, an at home baker. Mm -hmm. She does it on the side. She does not consider it her primary income. She, you know, I, I would say she, I mean, her profits aren't, you know, huge, but she makes pretty good money on the side. She doesn't have anyone else involved in her business. Um, I did not think it was time for her to set up an entity. She doesn't want the maintenance of corporate records. She doesn't want the maintenance of a corporate account. All of those are signs that you're not going to keep your corporate account and personal account separate anyways. So don't go through the hassle of setting up an entity and then, you know, pain and strife that comes with trying to shut it down at the end if it's not maintained. But she still has a business. She still has a successful business. Absolutely. So that's what I'm saying in the first place. Be, be honest about what you want. Yeah. If you just want, like, my mother, um, I joined my, my tax practice with my mother um, 10 years ago, and she was always a sole prop. She never, never formed an entity. Um, it was just her, you yeah. know, and so, she had good liability insurance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I'm definitely not insurance. So, um, you know, what are your goals? What do you want? Now, it's like, like she's saying, if you get, if you're, if you're a corporation, if you're an LLC, you have responsibilities. You have to do certain things. Yeah. For a corporation, you have to maintain meeting minutes. You have to maintain, if you have shareholders, you have to maintain shareholder records. You have to maintain issuance of stock certificates. I mean, serious stuff it's not just hey i'm gonna jump on legal zoom and make myself legit today it's so much more than that yeah it's not trendy people people are like oh we have to have an llc you have to you have to be an s corp it's not a trend it's what works with your business and what you need i love that you, you take an angrier approach because you get the people on the back end that are like oh man we set up our entity we haven't done anything yeah. in two years what do we do now i'm not an angry person <laughs> Y'all know me, but, um, but yeah, so that's what I see. And yeah. literally in the last two months, I've had at least half a dozen people who've said, um, I don't know what I'm doing. I, they, yeah. they either got in, they either got a letter from the IRS, which is not what you want. Well, they're coming out now. The IRS is back at, you know, they're, they're churning back after they're, the COVID nightmare. They're, so, back, yeah. they're, they're, they're coming back, but they don't know what they're doing because they're still backed up really badly. Yeah. So people are getting letters or, okay. So let's talk taxes. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you are a sole proprietor, if you're an LLC tax as a sole proprietor, as mm -hmm. I said, you're reporting your income on a schedule senior 1040 revenue expenses, Profit or loss. That's it. Okay. So the IRS, because your business is you and you are your business, your profit is your income. Now it doesn't matter if you put it in the bank. It doesn't matter if you spent it on rent. It doesn't matter if your personal rent. It doesn't matter if you. I have um, a good question for you. Went on, went on vacation. The IRS sees that money as profit and it is taxed. It is taxed self-employment tax, which is your. And I've done lots of videos on my page about this. So, um, but you self-employment tax is your contribution to Social Security and Medicare. Okay, you, you need to pay it. So um, that's how that is taxed. Now, as a uh, corporation, you have a separate entity, so you go through payroll. If, and, and so you're, you're withholding your Social Security and Medicare is, is done through your paycheck. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is very important. I have, I have LLCs who are writing themselves paychecks, um, and, and no, don't do that. Um, also, be very, very clear, Texas Federal. federal. They have different, 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 different <laughs> rules. And I get a lot of calls. I get a lot of calls. I, got, I have a problem with my taxes. So I immediately and you're assume, like state or federal. Yeah, I immediately assume the IRS. And then it's like, oh, no, it's sales tax. Well, that's totally different. Yeah. Totally different. So, yeah. If, if, but if you're in business, we're not going to talk about this today, but if you're in business, 
um, selling any product, and most services in Texas, you are responsible for sales tax. Our so photographers are responsible for sales yeah. tax. Yes, in fact, yes. There, was, there was a huge <laughs> debate about this. He's right there, and yes. this, is actually, this actually is a court decision, though. Oh, yes, it is. Because people said, um, well, the session is the session be taxable? Yes, because the IRS, or the, Texas said, there's no point in having a session fee unless you're producing a product. So even the session fee is liable for sales tax. I get a lot of photographers. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had somebody. I mostly you see people who aren't collecting sales tax. Right? Totally. I had one who or collecting it. Who is collecting sales tax? And not. She's not turning around and changing. She doesn't have a permit. <laughs> she just heard she's supposed to collect sales tax. So um, I did have and a that's video just a on general my page note. about sales tax. Yeah, that's a general note too, Deb. That I think is important to convey every chance that I get. Don't go into your business sloppy. Um, there is, there, there's so many things that you could risk in doing so. Texas is harsh. Oh man, they don't. I had a client that just got a bill for $8,000 from the state of Texas because she wouldn't do her sales tax right. So we have yeah. a big issue. Do you do that? Do you work with sales tax? I, I don't. I okay. send them to you. I don't no, do any, for the any, legal side. Oh, for the legal side, no. Okay. I don't do anything okay. with sales tax. Okay. I do help people get their permits when we're setting up. I'm talking about the one that's already in trouble. Mm -mm. No, I don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, that's what you're saying. So, um, the what was another thing that we needed to talk about? About let's say you set up your business and you're not going to be by yourself. Do we need to talk about what the hiring process looks like? Let's talk about that next time. time. Okay, so awesome. so this is a three part series, um, and so today we're focusing on starting up. We need to start up yes. next week. We'll talk about one from business and growing. So, in, so hiring huge, huge, huge. But we'll talk about that next time. So I want to talk a little about what my firm does when we start a business. Yes. Um, so you come in to my office, which we're meeting back in person again. I would love to have a beautiful you. office. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I would love to have you come visit and we sit down and we basically do a Q&A session where we try to figure out what you're doing, what your goals are, because I think goal discussion is so missing in the entity formation setup process. <laughs> so we talk about goals and we kind of sketch out a super rough business plan. What is this business going to look like and, and give some time frames. Then I present the clients with a formation questionnaire. And so we go through names, we go through who's going to be involved, who's going to be a member of the entity, how it's going to be, you know, what percentage interest will each party have. And then we determine which entity is the best fit for this business. And if there are multiple people involved in the entity, I will hit you with a six page partnership questionnaire that I expect both parties to answer privately. And then I have them submit it to me separately so and I review them side by side. You guys would be shocked when you see how people view how the business is going to be handled. Now this is time to know it, not later. Yes, this is before it's even set up. So it's like one partner thinks it should go down this way. The other partner's like, absolutely not. It's not going to go down this way. So I bring the partners back in together and we sit at my conference table and we say, okay, you thought it should go this way. You said it would go this way. And we have some very, sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, you're kind of like a married heated. counselor. I am. I'm a business counselor. <laughs> and it gets a little bit heated, but we try to get to the bottom of, can we make this work under this, you know, frame uh, or can we look at another way to set this up. Maybe each of you have your own LLC so that you can maintain it the way like that, that you I want to. Like um, so there is no one size fits all when it comes to setting up a business, which is why I talk about LegalZoom in the way that I do. It's a very one size fits all approach and that's just not how business entity formation should be. It's unique to your business and what you expect from your business in the future. So that's how Absolutely. our firm handles the entity formation process. And then we file all of your documents with the Secretary of State, and we we will draft up your company agreement. And depending on, again, it's not a cookie cutter agreement. Depending on the type of business and the structure between the members, we will custom draft an agreement that meets the needs of your business going forward. We're gonna issue membership interest certificates. We order a custom leather bound corporate book with your new business name on it. And we print all of your newly drafted documents and they'll be housed in your corporate book that we will put together for you. And then I send you over to Deb. 
And after your business is formed, I think you should have a at least one hour consultation with somebody who handles business taxes and know what are my deadlines? What do I need to have prepared? What do I need to keep? It's a great question, Deb. I love to go out to lunch with work people and I like put it on my business credit card and I've been under the impression that I can write it off. And Deb is saying, yes, but some years there's a different percentage of that bill that you can write off. Which is this year. This year, so this is the year to go out. Um, you might, yeah, exactly. You mm -hmm. might, you might know, you might um, really have, have noticed that Congress has been super busy in 2020 passing coronavirus related legislation. And all of these involve tax. <laughs> and so one of the things they did, which was actually very good news, was um, they changed something that has to do with the meals. So let's talk about general meals. Yes, you can deduct your meals if you have a business purpose. And on the receipt, you need to be writing down what that business purpose was. Yes. I had lunch with so and so to talk about so and so, and um, and this is how many miles I drove to get there. So you, everything you, you can deduct a ton of stuff, but Except you have to records. document everything. Yes. Because if the IRS looks at it and they you can't document it, they're gonna get rid of it. So do you have some cool tips Hold on, for people to help? So usually, usually you can deduct fifty percent of your meals. Okay. Your business meals, because the IRS figures you have to eat anyway, and you can't deduct personal expenses. But for 2021, as some, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna try to be really nice, um, as an effort to help um, local restaurants <laughs> that have suffered um, through the past year, 100% uh, of your meals can be deducted <gasps> at a restaurant. So they're trying to encourage us to get back into the restaurants. So get back into the restaurants, support our local restaurants. So many of them have, have, have gone, so let's save the ones that are there. And 100%, but back it up. Keep those receipts right on your receipt. Who you talked to, what the business purpose was, because there's not. And oh, this is an example I always use. Driving through Starbucks on the way to work is not a business expense. It's not a deductible business expense. Yes. Yeah. You have to be actually talking to someone about a client. Mm -hmm. Talking to me or Kyle account. You can yeah, buy us lunch. You give me. Yeah, you can give me a call while you're ordering some coffee. You should. You should. You should. Okay. Let me be done. Um, so yeah, this is, we're full of a bunch of information. Um, oh, just, oh, I was going to say, Deb, is there like an app or something cool that business owners can, next time. Next time. We'll Come back time. next time. But yes. yes, there are, there are apps. And we have to challenge ourselves. We have just a few people watching. So next time we're going to really amp it up and try to get a bigger audience. But yeah, there are, but it's going to be recorded. People can go back yeah, and watch the and, playback. I never watch live stuff. What I want to ask of anybody who's watching this or watches it later, if you have questions for us that we may not have hit on today, hit us up with a direct message or a comment on this video and we will ponder those questions and have answers for you next week when we do our second series of this. Yeah, and I always um, I always post up on my page. I'm always doing little quick videos about things, so be sure to follow my page and Carla's pages. Yeah, I don't post anything, but I would love for you to follow me and um, maybe I'll start doing my videos more. It's fun. It's fun. See my Jesse, face on the camera. any questions that we can answer? Oh, yeah, Jess. It's, it's a beautiful face. Thanking you for your information. You're welcome. Uh, thank so you. Just lots of thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much. We are happy to do it. We, just, yeah. we, both, um, we are both similar in that we just want to help people. Yeah. And, and we think outside the box. We're and we creative want, souls. Mm -hmm. um, we are we, neither one is a typical lawyer, no. a lawyer accounting no. person. So we I just, got into art school out of high school. <laughs> and uh, Deb's an artist. So we, we like to be creative. And I think that that... Think is it, I think that's an asset to have in somebody who's helping you. It's not always black and white, and I think that that's kind of a misconception mm -hmm. when it comes to both. I mean, people think law and taxes could be the two most boring things in the world, but Are you we boring? beg to boring. differ. I'm not boring. I'm not. I'm a heck no. You're not boring. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you missed it, you can catch the replay. It'll be on. It'll be on my page. Yep. And uh, thank you so much. And um, we will post uh, when the next ones will be. What the topics will be. Cool. Alright, this was great. Thanks. Bye.